<laughs> so when we're talking about shooting from behind cover or concealment, we all know the difference between the two. In this video, we're gonna work on not putting our muzzle in front of the barricade. Of course, if I, if I had my druthers, I would use this as a support, but for today, we're just gonna talk about keeping our muzzle behind the cover and concealment. Reason for that is I don't want everybody on this side knowing where I'm shooting from. Because if I put my muzzle through there, not only do they get to see the muzzle blast, but they get to see the little black stick that it's coming from, okay? So keep that in mind while we're doing this. This piece of cart or this piece of plywood here is not gonna stop my bullet. So I could even shoot through this plywood at those targets down there and probably still hit. Keep that in mind. That is not what I'm going for today. I might do it once just, just for show. All right, so the different uh, positions we're gonna take behind this barricade, the way that I think about it is I gotta figure out a way that my sights and my muzzle can both see that target and then I have to find a way to get my happy ass behind the gun. I'm not maneuvering the gun to my convenience, I'm getting my ass behind the gun. So for example, this one here, this is how the gun can see the target, both muzzle and the uh, sights. So I've got to figure out a way to get behind the gun to where I can accurately engage. Now I'm not gonna carry on like a million round gunfight from this position. I'm just worried about getting one or two accurate shots off on that steel. And then I'll go down a couple of these different positions in here less than favorable positions. All right, now we here at T1G, we like to shoot steel a lot, so definitely make sure you got eyes and ears when you come out here, at least the eye part. I don't care about your ears, you sign a waiver. All right, so here we go. For this one, my sights are up on target, but as you can see right now, I'm looking at the, the target through my sights, but my barrel can't see the target. So if I were to take that shot right now, I'd, bl I'd blast that wood. From this distance, not a big deal, but again, that's not the purpose of this drill. So I'm gonna find a way both my sights and my barrel can see through there. A lot of times, this is why it's nice to have a spotter. Not only just to see where your shots go, but also tell you if your muzzle's gonna clear or not, okay? This is just plywood, not a big deal. If this were concrete or if this were like metal, not a big, uh, that would be a little bit more of a big deal. I'd get a lot of spall, okay? So that's no bueno for me. More importantly, I wouldn't hit my target. All right, so find the sights, find my barrel. I can just do a quick check because I've got both eyes open and then I can go ahead and engage that steel. Okay, you also get a lot of reverberation this way, so uh, be prepared for some more overpressure. All right, after I get done shooting every time, <clears throat> like Sid says, did I hit him? Did it work? Are there any more? Those are the three things that Sid always reminds me about. It's fundamentals of marksmanship, it's follow through as well. But you know, when you hit somebody, steel target, paper target, or live uh, breathing target, sometimes one round doesn't do the job. So did I hit him? Did it work? And then does he have any buddies? Okay, that's when, I'm, that's when we look around, uh, assess and search. All right, next position we're gonna cover is this angle right here. Now, this is Rob's Daniel defense gun. He zeroed it at 50 meters. <clears throat> So targets this close, the relationship between our bore and our sights doesn't really matter that much, but let's take a look at it uh, out to distance. My line of sight is just going straight like a laser, okay? But the bullet's actually gonna rise, yes, snipers, it's gonna rise and fall in relation to my line of sight when the gun is like this. The more I start tilting the gun, the more it changes the relationship between my line of sight and my trajectory, okay? So in the extreme, when I've got my gun twisted like this, or Rob's gun twisted like this, my line of sight is still just going straight on to infinity and beyond. But now my bullet's not gonna rise in relation to the, to the ground, it's just going left and down. So at greater distances, I do have to keep that in mind, all right? One of the rules of thumb is uh, when you have your gun canted like this, uh, slide it to the side of your, your magazine, because bullets go in that way, so I'm gonna just aim a little bit more that way. Just know your trajectory. I don't know why they call it a rule of thumb. You can't really do much damage with that. All right, so now we're going to this one. This is how my gun can see, behind, see through that portal. Now I see my barrel can make it. I can see my sights can make it. Now I gotta find a way to get my, myself behind it. Okay, easy day. 
Some of you guys, you bigger guys, especially when you got, especially when you've got your your gear on, all your kit, this becomes a little bit more strenuous. All right, like this, these next couple of positions. Um, so good luck with that. Write us and let us know how it turns out. So this next one, all the way down here, I'm gonna have to have my gun canned either this way or this way. I'm a right-handed shooter. I'm gonna take the gun, I'm gonna put it this way. <clears throat> We're gonna have to get in some weird positions here. This really ain't that bad. So right now I can see the target. My muzzle can see the target. <clears throat> so I feel all right taking this shot. All right, now let's get on the ground. We already went through some of the videos uh, where we were shooting in and around vehicles. So these are just some of the same positions. Now we're just shooting them here. So let's go for the most inconvenient one. I'm gonna have to get down behind that triangle. Um, for this one, we actually call this the broke back, look that up. But this one, my ejection port is gonna be facing the ground, okay? So some things I've gotta worry about because it's such close proximity to the ground is I've got to have a clear path for that uh, spent brass to get out, otherwise I'm going to induce a malfunction. Many times what we'll see is guys will get the gun really close to the ground and you'll be able to get that first round out, but then you induce a malfunction. Other times they may grab the gun like this, get down on the ground, same thing happens. First round, yep, you get it out, but you just induced a malfunction. So uh, you're already in a shit storm, give yourself an advantage and make sure that that thing's clear, okay? So I'm going to take my support hand put it here for support, and I'm gonna get down behind the gun. I may not get a good uh, stock weld. I'm okay with that. I may not get a good cheek weld. I'm okay with that. <clears throat> this gun is not gonna kick my ass. So, now I'm down behind the gun. I can see the target, and my barrel can barely see it, but that's all right, I'm gonna take it. All right. I don't know if we could see it, but you see all the dust that got kicked up there. Be prepared for that. So now we've got a lot of overpressure coming back and we've got a lot of the dust is coming back in our faces. Just be prepared for that. All right, last thing I wanna cover briefly is I know we've all seen this in the movies. I blame bad television for this, is when <clears throat> you see the guys behind cover concealment and they're sucked up against the wall and I'm gonna go to my right and they're like, okay, we're gonna do this and then they pop her out around the corner and they're just blah, blazing, okay? That's great in the movies. I understand how comfortable this cover and concealment feels. It's your whoobie. But do yourself a favor, don't get sucked up to the cover because if I were to use that same tactic that they just used, as I come around, I may be able to see the threat, but there ain't shit I can do about it from here besides die, okay? So what I'd rather do is step off my cover to where I can get my muzzle up first and then come out, okay? You know, we could talk about changing sides later, but either way, I'm behind cover, I wanna have my muzzle up and then come out. All right, so keep that in mind. Uh, if you guys have any thoughts or comments about that, just leave it below, thanks.